Hi, everyone. Welcome to Acting with the Five Senses and the Five Ws. My name is Ashley Sales, and I'm the facilitator for this class. Um, so we'll be starting up an eight-week session in January, which I hope that you all can join for. And we have this fabulous Harbor City Theater space where we've set up three cameras and different angles. If you're at home, you won't miss anything because we've got you covered in lots of different ways. And if you're in the theater and it's COVID safe, we've got a space set up here for you to be in class with me. And today I'm doing a holiday sampler class. So I call it a sampler because it's going to be a little bit different than what we'll do starting in January. And the main difference is in January, I'm going to have you here and your friends here and people that we can engage with and interact with. So today's activities that I'll be leading you through are going to be just kind of one-on-ones that you can do at home by yourself and I'll just guide you through them. So, and of course, once we're together in class with a group, we'll be bringing in group activities where we can collaborate together, which is always lots of fun as well. So some of you might be wondering what this class is all about and that's why you've clicked on, you know, this little link on the website to describe what is uh, acting through the senses and the five W's. Well, I think you're all familiar with your five senses and the five W's are, are the five W questions. So just take a minute and if you have a pen and paper handy, write down the five senses and the five W's. If you don't have pen and paper, just take a moment and think about them in your mind. And you can just use your fingers to count them off. You should come up with 10. Okay, you ready? Let's see which ones you've got. So sight, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching. Is that five? Good. And then our five W questions. We've got who, what, where, when, and why. And why are we exploring those in acting? Well, some people believe that those are the 10 kind of basic building foundations of acting. There's other techniques and tools that actors use, but we're always engaging with our five senses and the, those five questions and answering them as we work as actors. So I have a little something to read to you. This is from a book called Kids Take the Stage, and it um, doesn't really matter how old or young you are, it's a fabulous book. I am obviously not a kid, but I'm a kid at heart, and I like it very much. So if you guys can, you might be able to see this. If not, I'll just read it to you. The 10 elements of acting, those basic elements we said, once again, who, what, where, when, and why, making sure you can always answer those questions when you're acting, and your five senses, sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. So a play or a movie or a musical, is, it's a story. It could be a simple or complex story. It could be scary or funny. And with any good story, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And it's made up of answers to these five W's we just talked about. Audiences learn some of the story, the answers to the five questions, when they hear the lines of dialogue or what you're saying or maybe when they hear sounds of music or see the sets and lighting. But they also learn a large number of the answers from the way the actors behave in the show. Actors behavior is extremely important to the story. And this is something that in acting classes, we don't always pay enough attention to the behavior. An ounce of behavior is worth a pound of words. So that's just something, a little something to think about. So getting started, I'm sure you're all very ready to get started. That's why you're here today in this holiday sampler class. The first thing to do is to set up your space at home since you're all at home today. It's really important that you're comfortable. So I'm wearing comfortable clothing. This is always important when you're working. Um, so you're free to move your body. Um, shoes, I've got some really boots I like to move in. You might be barefoot or in socks at home. Just make sure you're not going to slip on the floor. Um, keep a water bottle handy. Make sure you've had a snack. And you don't have to have a, a stage like I do, which I'm so fortunate to get to play on. Um, but you do need 
enough space that you can extend your arms fully, turn in a circle without banging anything around you, not you know grandma's special vase or whatever. Um, and if you can walk comfortably in three or four feet, three or four steps in each direction, side to side, front and back. But just do your best and find that space. Mainly, you know, as long as when you reach out this way and take a step from side to side, you're not going to break anything in your house. You should be good. Um, we are going to make some sounds in this class. And it's always a little bit awkward, especially when you're making sounds by yourself in your house. So you may feel more comfortable shutting a door so that your brothers and sisters aren't peeking in at you. Perfect. So we've got that, and we're just going to do a little check-in before we start. So take a moment, just take a deep breath, in and out, and find one word that describes how you're feeling right now. And if we were engaging on a live class, you could post this in the chat. And then we could see how everyone's feeling and just do a little check in with the group. Or if you didn't feel like sharing, you could keep it to yourself. So just hang on to that word or jot it down if you do have a paper and pen handy. Good. So now that we're comfortable in our space, we've had a check in with ourselves, we're going to get into what I like to call ready stance or neutral stance. And this is how I like to start uh, my warm ups. So pretty basic, but I'll just talk you through it. My feet are slightly apart, so not together and not too wide. And I'm just going to ground those feet into the ground. So I'm really connected to the floor below me. My knees are just slightly bent, and I don't mean like an exaggerated bend, but just not locked out. So just having a little bit of softness in the knees. And you might want to play with just checking that your knees are soft. You'll probably be able to move a little bit from side to side, back and forth. Good. And I roll my shoulders down and back. I do it a couple times. I tend to carry lots of tension in my shoulders. A lot of us do in our world. And then I imagine a string just lifting my head up towards the ceiling and beyond. And you might notice you feel a lot taller. It opens your rib cage to take nice big breaths and you have some more movement and ease from side to side. So actors use their bodies. That's our tool to communicate in the world. So you want to make sure your body is comfortable. Great. So like I discussed, I had those five senses and five questions. Um, those are the 10 basic elements that we'll be focusing on in our classes. But we'll also be working on specific techniques because as actors, we need to work on our concentration. We need to work on relaxation. We need to work on using our voices. Good. And our bodies we need to be limber and strong. So we'll start with a breathing activity. So we're in our neutral stance, checking in. This one's always the one that I forget, that nice, tall, elongated spine, the string reaching you up. And we're going to start with just some deep breathing. So bring your hands to your belly. You're going to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And in and out. And you should notice that it's not your belly that's rising, but it's your lungs filling with air, but displacing your belly, your stomach to go up and out and in. I have a kind of a gurgle in my stomach right now. It's funny. There we go. Good. You can try bringing your hands to your ribs or to your sides, expanding out that way in and out. And one more. Good. So that's the breath that we want to connect with when we're working. It will help us with our voice projection as well. Okay, so this breathing activity is called breath of joy. 
Bring your hands to your sides. You're in your neutral or ready position. Breathe in, arms up. Out, palms together in front of you. Breathe in, palms together to your heart. Breathe out, interlace your fingers, stretch them forward. Breathe in, looking up, stretching up, reaching up. Looking up and out, arms down. Good. So we'll do it a couple more times. I'm going to play around with this other camera and see if I can demo it so you can see it from the side. Okay. So neutral position, ready position, breathing in, arms up. Out, palms together. In, palms to center. Out, interlacing the fingers, reaching forward. Up. In and up, looking up, stretching up, and out and down. Good. So that's relaxing us. That's connecting us with our breath. Let's get a little more energy into it. So this is also called a breath of joy, but this is a fast one. And this one, I love doing it. makes me feel like I'm skiing down a hill or something. So for this one, um, instead of being in that straight neutral stance, we're going to just bring our our feet out a little bit wider and get a bit more bend in the legs. Good. So I'll demonstrate it. It's in through the nose. Every in-breath is through the nose and out through the mouth. Okay, you can follow along once you've got it. Good, keep going. I'll move to the side. Let's go faster. Really bend those knees. One more. Good. It always wakes me up if I'm feeling at all sleepy, which I'm not because I'm here with you guys. Okay, so we did our breathing. We're going to shake out our bodies, get any last tension out. And I like to really start to bend my knees, patter my feet. My heels are going back and forth on the floor. My elbows are really floppy. And then I'm going to add a sound to it. So I like to call this, I don't know, popcorn. I think about it as popcorn. My jaw is really loose. Uh, and I know it feels really silly, but acting is kind of silly. Uh, good. Okay. So we did some popcorn. We did some breathing. Let's do a tongue twister. I've got a holiday one that I picked up. And I'm going to come closer so you can see me a little better. So tongue twisters, why do actors do them? I know I've been in acting classes and done them and never really knew why. Um, I find it's really helpful for me to learn how to articulate my words clearly so that when I tell stories on stage, people can understand what I'm saying. So, and it takes practice. So this one is silly Sally said six sad snowmen sat sideways singing. So when you do this tongue twister, I want you to focus on beginning of the word, so you've got all those S's, S, but don't forget the end of the word. So, six, um, silly Sally said six sad snowmen sat sideways singing. Let's try it together. Silly Sally said six sad snowmen sat sideways singing. Good. Let's do it again, a little faster. Don't forget the ends of those words, especially the X and the S together. Silly Sally said six sad snowmen sat sideways singing. Can you say it like you are really excited? Silly Sally said six sad snowmen sat sideways singing. How about sleepy? Silly Sally said six sad snowmen sat 
sideways singing about angry. Silly Sally said a sick sad snowman sat sideways singing. So you can play around with this tongue twister more at home um, and it's really fun to play with them and use different uh, tones or reason why you'd be saying those words and you'll notice it just changes it every time. Nothing's ever boring in acting because it's always new. You can always find new ways to do things. All right, so we're warmed up. I'm going to walk you through a guided imagery. It's called Memory Palace. If you checked out my writing class, I also did this activity with them. Um, it's as important for writers as it is for actors. So this is just to get us connected with our senses and the five W's. So I want you to think about uh, a favorite holiday winter activity that, that you like to do. And it needs to be something that you've actually done. So not something you've seen on, I mean, maybe you've seen it on TV, but it has to be something that you've also done, not just something you've read about or seen. And if you've done it more than one time, pick one time that you did it. So be really, really specific. Was it the time you did it with Grandma Sue or the time you did it with Uncle Bob? You choose. And you might be going through your memories right now, trying to pick one. If you have a hard time choosing, I know I do, don't worry, because you can do this again anytime with any memory. You always have this memory palace that you can access. So once you've chosen your memory, um, if you feel like you need to change things up for yourself and you want to sit, you're welcome to sit. Or you can just go into your neutral ready stance. Just find a comfortable place. This will take just a few minutes, so make sure you're comfortable. Just close your eyes and connect with your breath. Now that your eyes are closed, you're going to use your mind's eye to see where you are. Take a look around you. What do you notice? What is there with you? What kind of objects? Are you outside? Are you inside? Is it nighttime? Is it day? What's the temperature like? What's the weather like? If you're outside, is it windy, snowing? Where do you feel that weather? Where is it coming from? Is it at your side? Is it above you? If you're inside, is it from a heater? What direction? Just let your body and your mind's eye find where that's coming from. Are there any sounds around you? Just take a moment to find the sounds. Is it a buzzing? A whisper? Where is it? What are you touching? Are you touching anything? Can you reach out and feel things around you? Under your feet? Or at your side? How do your hands feel? Are they cold? Are they warm? What are you wearing? Really just notice what you notice. And who are you with? How does that affect what you're doing? Who are you with? A friend, family member, a pet? Or are you by yourself? And what are you doing? What actions are you doing? Watch yourself doing these actions. And how is it making you feel? 
So take one more moment, look around your memory palace. Take a deep breath in and out and open your eyes. So you might be wondering, why did we just do that guided imagery? Well, the answer is we were engaging with those senses. So we use those senses and those five W's to really make rich and real experiences. Because actors, what they do is they draw from their experiences to create characters. And we've all had lots of experiences in our lives. So that was a full mind experience that we just did. And now we're going to use our full body to engage. So let's get some moving. So someone once said, I think I read it in a book, that acting um, without using your whole body would be like playing the piano with one finger or typing. Right? It doesn't give you the whole experience. So this is just kind of a silly game we're going to play or exercise, I guess we could say, because we're not playing together today. Um, we're going to be writing a word with different parts of our body. And don't feel shy about doing this. No one else is around you, I'm sure. Or if they are, then just ask them to join in. It's more fun that way. So let's go with the word snow. We'll all just write the word snow. So um, just reach out your arm, and we're going to write the word snow. And you're probably, I'm going to write it. It's probably going to look backwards, but don't worry about it. So snow, S-N-O-W. So we're going to write it in the air. It's nice and free. Make them really big, sweeping motions. Up, down. See if you can just engage, move those knees, coming up, stretching around. I've got that nice big O and a W, fill up as much space around you as you can. Good. That was pretty easy. Can you do it with your other hand? Good. Left arm. Reaching up all the way down. And big fat O. And our wonderful W. Good. Awesome. So let's try writing snow with our noses. Okay. I'll come a little closer. Can you see my nose? Okay, here we go. And I know I look really silly, but I don't care. Good. Should we try our shoulders? <laughs> it's kind of hard. What about elbows, opposite arm? Don't always go for the easy one. Good. How about legs? I'm going to draw it with foot. Ooh, that's pretty fun. Got to work on your balance, too. <laughs> and let's just do the other side. Got to be balanced on both sides. You never know what you'll be asked to do on stage. One time I was Peter Pan. I got to do all kinds of acrobatics. Good. So fabulous. We did some writing with our body parts. You can play around with any different parts of your body at home when you're doing that exercise. Um, so now I want to add a little other element to it, and this is as if. So this is something, another thing we play with when we're acting, as if. So we're going to write the word snow as if we're holding a paintbrush in our hands and we're writing it on a very beautiful mural that we've created. So a mural is a really large painting. Okay. Just notice if you had a brush in your hand, how would that change the way that you moved? Mine's a really big mural. Good. Um, let's try writing it as if you were writing it on, um, ooh, 
see if we were in class, we would just shout out ideas. I wouldn't have to come up with them. Um, how about you're writing it on like some sticky mud with uh, your other hand? And you might notice like when I said sticky mud, you might have had a kind of an emotional or physical reaction to how that even feels when you're writing it. So maybe physically it doesn't look a whole lot different to you what I'm doing. I'm going to do it again. But I feel different when I'm writing on sticky mud than when I'm writing on a big, beautiful mural. If you're tired of writing snow, just pick another word. Uh, let's try writing as if you are writing, uh, you only have your pinky <laughs> and you're going to be writing in, in water, like in a pot. You might want to shake the water off at the end. Yeah, good. All right, so that's an as if. So that was one, just using our body to write some words. Um, let's engage more of our body. So we're going to do some as ifs with walking. So everybody, hopefully at this point in their lives, knows how to walk. If you don't, if you can't walk, like if you're in a wheelchair, you can also do this moving in a wheelchair, um, just moving how you move. But for me, I've got two legs and they work. So I'm going to demonstrate with those. So walking. Okay. I'm going to start. Let's just go back to that kind of ready position, neutral position, or you can call it the reset for a moment. And in your space, you're just going to start walking at a comfortable pace for you back and forth. So this is just like how you walk. Notice how you walk. This is going to be different than how I walk. I don't want you to copy my walk. I want you to do your walk. Do you. You do you. Good. And I'm not in a rush to go anywhere right now. I'm in this great theater. So I'm taking my time. I'm really relaxed and comfortable. Good. So now I'm going to add an as if for you. And just notice how it's going to change things. And once again, I don't, I'm going to demonstrate, I'll keep demonstrating, but don't copy me because the beauty of this is you're coming up with your own authentic ideas. And that's really important. Okay, so you've got your regular walk. Let's stop, reset. I want you to walk as if you are late for a test. Okay, keep going. Just spend a minute with it. Keep going. Okay, and stop. And reset. This time, try walking as if you are late for an airplane that's taking you to Disneyland. Okay, I'm not really walking anymore. It's more of a run for me, but I would really want to get on that airplane. I don't know about you. Okay, good. Good. Hope you get there. I really hope you get there. It's going to be fun. Okay, good. Stop. Okay. Awesome. Ah, reset. This time, try walking like it's midnight and you're trying to get a midnight snack without waking anyone up in the house. Okay, you ready? Go. Did you get it? Good. Okay, this time, let's reset. This time, walk as if you are trying to get a treasure that's guarded by a sleeping, fire-breathing dragon. And you can move forward or back, too, if you want to change things up. Let's go. Good. 
Keep with it. You're almost there. I can see you getting it. Hopefully you didn't get burned. Okay, let's do one more. Um, this time, don't forget to check in with just your neutral stance. Walk as if you're trying to save your most precious belonging that's on a shelf from falling and breaking. So first, before you get moving, look to see where that shelf is and what's on it. I want you to locate it with your eye. And ready, go. I hope you caught it that time too. So anyway, that's just a way to play with physical activities, um, depending on what's happening or who you're with. Those circumstances are gonna give you so many options of how you can even walk or write your name or move through space. Good. I'll check the time. I think we have a few more minutes. So hope you guys are still having fun. If you need, just grab a quick glass of water because these next exercises, we're going to be doing some speaking. Time. All right, so don't want to forget about our holiday theme that I promised you today. So we did a little bit of writing with snow and thinking about those holiday or winter activities we like. Um, now we're going to use our words and I'm going to give you a phrase and you're going to say that phrase as if something is happening. So this one, we're going to say, I love it. So let's just practice saying, I love it. Say it just in a neutral, easy way. Keep repeating it. I love it. I love it. Good. Now I want you to this time think about you've just received a gift from someone and you actually love it. It's like the best gift you've ever seen ever. Okay, so think about that gift and how you feel and now say, I love it. Try it again. I'll show you my gift. I love it. You might have noticed a little excitement in my voice too. I was excited about that gift. Um, okay, this time you're going to say, I love it. You're receiving a gift, but you really don't like it. Have you ever had that happen? But you don't really want to hurt the person's feelings. So you're going to say you love it, but you don't actually love it. Okay. Um, so think about what's in your hand. What is this gift? Say, I love it, with that in mind. Good. Okay, mine? I love it. <laughs> okay, um, let's try saying, I love it. Um, Maybe your mom or dad or someone that's, or your sibling baked something for the holidays and um, it tastes delicious. You really do like it. It's like one of your favorite foods. So think about that food. Think about your response. Say, I love it. Good. I love it. I love it. And you can play around with how many ways can you say, I love it and really mean it and feel it. Okay, what if someone was feeding you something in the holidays and it was like really kind of burnt and crispy and just tasted really bad? And you've just taken a bite. So it's in your mouth, you were actually expecting it to be really good. So you take a big bite. And say, I love it. I love it. Right? Could you notice the taste in your mouth? and how it actually shapes your mouth in a different way. You ever had a lemon? Let's, let's try putting it, maybe someone gives you a lemon and they want you to try it. I love it. Mmm, sour. <laughs> so yeah, that's just another way that you can play with words and you can see there's so many ways that we can say things and have different meanings behind them. Well, I think that is what I've got for you today. I'm really glad you came to class. 
and I hope to see you in January. We're going to have tons of fun. Um, this just gives you a little bit of a taste of some of the things we'll be doing together. Bye!